All right, I'm going to start off by saying I love you. I think you're awesome. I have always loved you. I think you're just incredible. Um, wow. Yeah, I think you're amazing. And we met years ago briefly at a Vanity Fair party, right? Yes, I do remember that. Yeah, just yes. briefly. But I haven't seen you since then, and you've never been on, been on the show, even though we you had... We kind of interconnected. Yes, we have. you you have a big part of uh, of Dory in Finding Dory. She <laughs> she hears Sigourney Weaver's voice all the time, and it's hilarious, yeah, right? No, I love the way you say. My friend Sigourney told me to do this. Yeah. Oh, right? Sigourney, I need your help. Please join us. Oh, great, great, great! As we explore the wonders of the Pacific Ocean and the amazing life it holds. Sigourney? Sigourney Weaver, where are you? <laughs> Every time I was doing that in the in the recording studio, <laughs> it was and it was so funny. Like I said, you had such a huge impact on me in, in a lot of your films, but especially Gorillas in the Mist. So when I was saying Sigourney Weaver over and over again, and now I'm actually cr trying to um, build this campus in Rwanda to join the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund, which you have been a part of since you did that film, right? I did. I just I, I just have to say at the very beginning that this gift that Ellen and the Wilderness Fund, and uh, it, uh, the Wildlife Fund, are giving our Diane Fossey. And Africa and Rwanda and the gorillas is going to be such a game changer. And I, it's just the, the generosity and, and brilliance of the gift just absolutely overwhelms me. And the way Portia came on and did it was one of the most beautiful things. I, I agree. I agree. Thank you so much. Um, I couldn't believe she remembered yeah. that. Um, so, so I, 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 you know, have been in, you know, in love with animals since I was a little girl, and especially with the the gorillas and and really all of the animals in Africa that need protection. But specifically, Diane Fossey, for some reason, touched me. I remember reading about her in the National uh, Geographic. Did you were you aware of her before they asked you to play that role? Oh yes, I had actually read the book. I remember thinking this is the greatest job in the world to to go out in the field and study animals every day and live with them. And so she was a great hero, hero to me. And I remember reading the book and thinking, well, it's too bad they can never make a movie of this, because you would never want to intrude on the gorillas in their wilderness. Um, and so it was amazing to me that we actually made a movie of yeah. it. And we were there, and I was with her study group five. and. You know. Yeah, I mean, I was jealous that you got to do that. I was like, what a great role, like you said. So, so tell me about what that was like the first day you were there, and you actually, because you can't interact with the gorillas anymore because they can right. get sick from us. And, and Exactly. But, but how, what was that like for you to the first day that you got to touch a gorilla? Well, it was absolutely incredible. I was been taught, you know, to, to, to stay low and to kind of go... <clears throat> <clears throat> which is a gorilla sound for saying, hi, I'm cool, how are you, just sitting here, and you kind of pretend to eat the celery a little bit, the wild celery, you go, mm. <clears throat> <clears throat> So you're doing that as I do that taught. anyway, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then I felt this warmth on my arm, and this little gorilla, uh, Josie, had come up and was kind of like this. And I felt her before I saw her, and it's just, being with the gorillas was the most exciting, transcending experience I've ever had. And I always loved animals, but this is completely different, because you're, you're sort of with your cousins. I mean, you're with your family, only they're just that much more wonderful than we are. <laughs> you know, they don't make war, you know, they just make love and, you know, and play and eat and they're just beautiful. You're gonna have a wonderful I time. can't wait, we're, we're leaving, we're going in June and, uh, and we're gonna visit the site where we're gonna yeah. build the campus and I'm gonna see the gorillas. And I mean, I'm just so jealous that I don't get to do that. Like, I don't get to hold them like you did, but it's just, just seeing them is gonna make me so happy. Yeah. Didn't you get charged by a silverback once? I did. I did. It's not in the movie because it was really my angle that was so exciting. Um, I did. I was. Um, what did you do wrong that it charged you? Because I blame you. Yeah. I, I'm sure you're right. You know, um, we'll never know. Uh, but I, the big girl, I stayed next to this very big silverback, Ziz, who was about 450 pounds because. 
there was another silverback named Pablo who used to grab women by their hair and drag them down the mountain. So by staying near Ziz, the big silverback, he would keep his eye on Pablo. So I always felt very safe next to him. He's in me, uh, in around me all the time in the movie. And one day, well, I came in, and uh, it was just me and the cinematographer and the focus puller, and I went up a, on a little rise, and we were looking down at the gorilla group, and I noticed that Ziz was like this, looking at me. And it was unusual that, that, that I would attract any attention, unless you were a baby and wanted my food in my bag. Um, because usually I had babies all over me. But today I didn't, and the, he just kept looking at me, and he just got up, and he beat his chest, and he charged right up the hill at me, and he swatted me. And I, I went over, of course, because he's very powerful, and I just stayed down. Um, and I remember thinking, I know Diane is watching over me. She wants this movie made. <laughs> <laughs> She's not going to let anything bad happen to me. But I could, you know, I'm sure you've been in these situations. All I could hear was my heart beating and the blood rushing through my veins because everything is so, you know. And then I started to crawl away through the underbrush and I ran into this scientist, David Watts, who was sort of our liaison. And he had this huge grin on his face and he said, well, you've just joined a very exclusive club. You've just been hit by a silverback gorilla. And I was sort of like, yes, I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine having, like, basically you're telling me if I want them to, I just do the, <clears throat> and then pretend to eat something. The, the wild celery, these yep. big long strings. Right, of, and do that, and then that's it. Yeah, and, and you will be more comfortable. I mean, you get oh, the smell of the place and, do they smell? What do they smell they like? They smell so good. They just smell. <laughs> they really do. Well, it's a great earthy. <laughs> um, I question your sense of smell. Um, all right. We'll we have to talk about this after you go. All right. All right. <laughs>